Hello everyone, this is Anna from Savvy Couch Realty and today I'm going to be talking to you about what not to do when moving to Portugal and working with a buyer agent. So I'm going to be talking about 10 different things that you shouldn't do when you are moving to Portugal and also some things about buy, working with a buyer agent. Before we start, I'd like to remind everyone that isn't aware that Savvy Cat Realty is a buyer and investment relocation agency that works with people that are looking to move to Portugal and supporting the whole process from visa to choosing the location to getting property or renting property to actually settling and even renovations and construction. If this is something that you think you will be needing, feel free to take a look at our website www.savvycatrealty.com where we share all the information on how our services work and also share a lot of useful tips and tricks and value and information about moving and relocation to Portugal. So. Feel free to subscribe to your YouTube and newsletter. We send weekly updates. So going into today's topic, I will be talking about what not to do when moving to Portugal. So the first thing that you should be very aware of is that Portugal is not cheap. So it may be cheap if you are maybe coming from California and the market and lifestyle is absolutely crazy there but the big cities are getting very unaffordable especially lisbon and porto we are talking about rent prices that are going minimum 1500 and in lisbon we have average prices of property of between six and eight five and eight k per square meter depending on the area in Porto it's still a lot more affordable but it's already up between 3.5 and 5.5 K per square meter and the places that are affordable are usually not the hotspot locations so if you are going to a less popular destination let's say Alentejo interior Portugal more of a mountain de destination Sure, some of the areas around Coimbra, sure, you will have some affordable options, a lot more affordable options, but they are also more affordable for a reason. And that reason is usually that accessibility is a lot worse. So things are usually not cheap just because, and they may be cheap by comparison, but for us locals, it's not cheap. <laughs> Another thing, so the second thing I think it's important for you to be aware of is to get updated information. Things are changing very fast and the information and videos that I made a year ago are often not no longer applicable at all. So it's important to get updated information and advice and not guide yourself for things that were even from six months ago because things have been so fast-paced lately on the real estate market and generally with the how fast things are moving that they change very fast and it's very important to be updated and get updated advice another thing that it's important is just just because you made a search and you found some affordable things don't think they are easily found or the general state of the market because one for once often things are listed and no longer available and that's the case both on rentals and on purchase a lot of agents and agencies will leave the listings up in order to get bio leads even though things are no longer available at the moment especially on the rental market there is a way more offer than demand so things usually move quite fast and aren't very affordable or negotiable especially from a local perspective and uh, the price range that you found just because you found something that matched the price range online it doesn't mean it's a realistic one and you should be 
trusting the locals and trusting the people that are giving you advice even if you're not working with us we there is a reason uh, the buyer agents are giving you that information and advice it's not because they want you to spend more money it's because things are as they are and you should listen to the advice that is given to you another next thing is also related so point four is if it's cheaper there is probably reason for it to be cheaper so if you find something that is a very nice option that is very cheap we have a saying here in Portugal that is a caval dado no se olha dentro, but then you also have, in this case, you should definitely <laughs> look at the teeth. So the, the expression says, uh, to a given horse, you shouldn't look at this teeth. In this case, you definitely should look at this teeth because it's probably rotten. The reason that you will be able to you'll be crossing a, a, a much cheaper apartment is probably because it's either on a really, really bad location or it's a very noisy location or it's a dangerous location or it's not as nice as it actually seems to be. Uh, We've been having quite a few surprises over time. I'm going to tell you a few interesting stories that happened to us. Uh, some time ago, my Lisbon agent found a really, really nice apartment in a really, really nice location and the pictures look great. But then when she went to visit, um, she realized it basically had no windows. So the whole house had one window. And she was like, oh, look, this is amazing. This is amazing price. And uh, the photos were nicely edited. So you didn't notice that at first. And it was an absolute shock to her when she got to the, apart to the apartment and found there was no windows. And most of the listings won't tell you the exact, the exact address, both on the rentals and on buyers, especially on buyers. Uh, because most of the cases the agents don't want to other agents to know the location because most agencies and agents don't have exclusivity and very often they will pin the location in a slightly different area that is not too far but is better so you should never ever make a purchase without one having someone look at things in person and two having a lawyer looking at contracts thing number five not to do be flexible on rentals there is like i was saying a lot more demand than offer you won't be able to have all the kinds of amenities and the uh, luxuries that you want uh, especially in the center of cities the the mostly construction is old it's not that easy to have apartments with elevators with balconies um, many of them don't even have climatization pretty much forget american fridges there is no such thing as american fridges in portugal it will only be part present on luxury apartments that have the equivalent price tag so be flexible and reasonable with your demands there is a lot more offer than the demand and offer on the rental market so you won't probably be able to find a luxury option unless you have the budget for a luxury option and even if you have the budget for a luxury option it will probably take a while to find a suitable one so keep that in mind the next thing is remember utilities are on top of rent so whatever you are be you are paying for rent especially if it's long term you'll be paying the utilities on top the better the energy certification of the house the more affordable those utilities will be but unfortunately not a lot of people indicate the energy certification on the, of the house on rentals although it is technically mandatory there is no one really uh, controlling those kinds of things so it's actually pretty rare for the utilities the energy certification to be uh, listed on the rental apartments. It happens more and more in cities like Lisbon and Porto, but in the other locations, it's very, very, very rare, unless it's new construction and already has that uh, certification. Point seven is there are no open houses or property visit tours in Portugal. 
in Lisbon you are starting to have some open houses because of the crazy demand that it is happening uh, that is happening in Lisbon but pretty much nowhere else you have open houses and it's still not a common a very common thing even in Lisbon so if you want to we have a lot of contacts from clients saying oh we would like to do a property visitation tour and that won't be a thing here in Portugal so basically usually all the different agents will agencies will have their own portfolio and if you contact them they will probably take you around and show you the things in their own portfolio but it only will only be the things in their own portfolio and keep in mind that they are working for the sellers so their job is to sell the house their job is not to make sure that you are making a good and fair purchase so if you want to work with uh, selling agencies and unfortunately here in portugal it's not considered a conflict of interest to represent both the buyer and the seller and in my personal opinion that is one of the main reasons the uh, prices have been uh, rising in a, such an uncontrollable uh, and unreasonable way but like i was saying it's not illegal so if you want to go ahead and do that you are absolutely free to just be very aware of the fact that they are working and their job is to sell the help overall and they will often the, the the information will be omitted and things will be painted pink uh, as much as possible next thing number eight do not make an offer if you are not a hundred a thousand percent sure you can you can move forward with it we sometimes it has happened to us in the past that clients uh, put in offers in apartments and houses both for rental and for purchase and then realize they can't afford it or they can't move forward with it this is a terrible terrible thing to do and a terrible practice it makes you look unreliable you lose uh, trust and reliability and the agency that is representing you will also be affected so please don't do this it is a very bad thing to do so number nine i always have at least 30 percent of the price of the apartment or a house you are buying so banks in portugal don't give 100 percent loans although the loan rates are better than other countries the irrebor tax has been rising in the past six months it has been a record rise of one percent in six months so it was something like 0 0.14 in something like february and at the moment it's already past 1.14 so the banks here in portugal and in most most of europe are quite strict on who they loan to and they have a lot of requirements for loans i do have a video about that that you can see in more detail but overall always have at least 30 percent of the buying price uh, the minimum amount is actually 20 percent but on top of that you will be paying the transaction and taxes and so on so it's always better to consider having at least 30 percent cash on the property that you are planning to buy and the budget that you have on buying number 10 and last one of this video is do not contact listing agents and agencies when you are working with a buyer representative whether that's us or someone else this can be very very problematic there are protocols and ways of doing things for a reason so like i was saying because here in portugal there is not exclusivity and is often more than one agency listing the same thing and sometimes there is exclusivity but there are protocols between agencies so another agent other advertise it so if you make a contact to one of these agencies that is not the listing original listing agency you will create a very problematic situation where three parties will be involved so whoever did the contract with the buyer uh, the seller i mean 
then whoever was contact that is a, a third party and the the people representing you so if you are working with a buyer uh, agent uh, never contact listings uh, we accept it in some cases when uh, as long as the, the when the clients make sure uh, they tell they are being represented but it's still not advisable at all because there are situations like this that can be very problematic when you know, there ends up being three parties involved it creates a very messy situation that everyone wants to avoid at all costs uh, there are other things that are much better to manage when the agencies are in direct contact with each other like setting the the share uh, from the start and also getting the information from the agents as we have been doing this for a while and we know what kind of questions to ask and how to get the information out so it's important to be uh, let us contact also because sometimes the clients will give more information than they should <laughs> and it doesn't help in the negotiation. So there are a lot of reasons why, why if you are working with a buyer representative, you shouldn't be contacting the listings directly. I believe that is all the 10 reasons. I'm just going to review them uh, for uh, the end. So one, don't think Portugal is cheap. Two, get updated information. Three, don't think that just because you found options online at a price range they will be available or a lot of options at that price. 4. If it is cheaper, there is probably a reason for it to be cheaper. You should check with locals and your agent to make sure things are suitable. 5. Be flexible on rentals. There is way more demand than offer. Six. Remember utilities are on top of rent or the bank loan. 7. There are no open houses or property visit tours in Portugal. 8. Do not make an offer if you are not 100% sure you can move forward with it. 9. Always have at least 30% of the price of the house you are buying. And 10. Don't contact listing agencies. Okay, so this is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative. We are always happy to hear your feedback and comments. Once again, if you want to know more about our services, feel free to visit www.savvycatrealty.com and of course subscribe to our YouTube and newsletter where we always give you updated weekly information about relocating and moving in living in Portugal. So I see you all next week. Bye.